And yes, Sarah, this has been going on for years. Why now? So the fact that the UN has come out and named these folks gives Facebook wide cover to do this kind of mass banning, but they could have acted on their own. They have known about this kind of ethnic violence since at least 2014. So slow to act is a little bit of an understatement. So talk to us a little bit about how Facebook was actually used to incite violence in this particular case. So the, the rumors about this this Muslim minority have been spreading, uh, you know, giving people the sense that they are worth killing, that they shouldn't belong. And those lies have spread on Facebook inciting violence in the region. Um, but Facebook has expanded into the, into regions like Myanmar and, and like Sri, Sri Lanka and beyond without really considering uh, that they would need to moderate content in that local language or even understand understand the kind of ethnic tensions that could be taking place there. The UN actually quotes a Facebook post from 2017, uh, the general uh, of Myanmar, as proof of pre-planned attacks. I mean, is there an argument to be made here? And I've heard critics like Roger McNamee make this argument that Facebook has perpetuated these atrocities by leaving these pages up. Well, absolutely, but they have grown into these regions without really thinking about the consequence of having this large-scale social media platform there, and they have been uh, sort of waiting for people to report content for takedown, and in many cases, they are not well-equipped to understand what exactly could be uh, inciting violence in that language. They just recently created a policy that would take down content for inciting violence, but as you know, they, their, their content policies are very uh, built up over time based on things that they've seen. It's all a trial and error process. They're creating policies based on the bad things that have happened in the past. And this is one of the bad things that they will have to add to that list and make and, sure it doesn't and, happen in and the future. And depends on user behavior and having the infrastructure already built right. up for users to actually flag that content. You know, this isn't just happening in, in Myanmar. You know, talk to us about what's happening in India with WhatsApp, in the Philippines um, as well. In India, it's, it's almost harder because WhatsApp is end-to-end -end encrypted. So Facebook can't even see what people are saying to each other that's leading to violence. We know that there have been mob lynchings. There has been a lot of false information that's been spread that has incited people to be violent to each other. Uh, but we don't know when it comes to WhatsApp, when it comes to those encrypted messaging forms, we don't know what Facebook can really do. There's no content reporting uh, mechanism the way there is on their, their services that they can see on their end. And what has Facebook said about this particular problem in India? Facebook has said that they are obviously, I mean, it's like the same thing we've seen from them before, that they are very saddened about this, that they are looking into it, that they're working with, with their local um, people who are subject matter experts on the ground and trying to figure out what they can do. Um, but, it, you know, it, it's very, it's going to be a, a very quick learning curve for them. and. Honestly, it's going to be difficult to instill confidence in the local government or in the local population that they'll be able to handle this, given that they're kind of learning on the job. And what about the Philippines? What's happening there? In the Philippines, it's, it's an it's a different kind of problem because you see actually the government, which Facebook has trained to use Facebook in a more effective way, the government is the one that's spreading the, the lies that are causing people to engage in violence against each other. So when it's a government, is that does that break the rules in a different way? I mean, these are complicated questions and the company is really only well versed in these things in countries where they have enough of a team that speaks the language and they have enough of the understanding of the culture to deal with it on a widespread manner. And um, if you look at their content policies, a lot of the, if you if you read through the rules that they've made, a lot of them are, are English-centric rules, um, the kinds of things that have been done on Facebook and, and taken down, very specific rules for each thing. There have been a lot of deep dives written recently about how those rules came about. Right. Um, but, you know, it, two billion people use this product, more than two billion, mm -hmm. and new things are going to come up all the time.